Hey everyone, how's it going? Big Timmy here, back in the studio. It's been a while, I know, I understand. I'm a busy man, so sue me, okay? Don't really sue me, okay? There's already been enough around of that stuff going around uh, in the YouTube community, so we'll stop doing that. Um, today I'm gonna talk to you guys about time lapses, more specifically time lapses for GoPros. Um, I myself own a uh, GoPro Hero 4 black version, um, which can do 4K and a bunch of other stuff. I don't really know the technical details, but you can watch another channel on that. Uh, today I'm gonna show you how to do time lapses using, using that GoPro. Um, not really using it, but how to bring it into post-production and make it look beautiful. Uh, as you can see from some of these uh, clips here, time lapses can be uh, jaw-dropping at times, and sometimes they can be the most frustrating things, <coughs> excuse me, you'll ever have to deal with. Hopefully, this video will help you guys get rid of that uh, fear, anger, confusion. Let's get started. Okay, so we have a project open here already. You should have one as well. So as you guys may know, there's two different versions of, of, of time lapses that you can select in, uh, in a GoPro. It's the video time lapse and then like a photo time lapse where it creates a sequence of photos and then you can do what you want with it in the uh, in post-production. Um, since video is easier, I'm gonna show you that first. If you're bored, skip ahead. So you can go and start, uh, I have a few time lapses here, so. Um, I'll just select these here and import. So here are some time lapses that I created uh, of the, uh, the beautiful city of Boston. If you haven't gone to Boston, you should go. Hit me up, I'll show you the good places. This is a good one. Um, so like I said, easy as one, two, three. You'll have your, your video time lapse video file ready to go. Uh, you can drag it from the source window to the timeline area to create a new timeline. And there you go. You have your time lapse ready to go. Uh, if you're like me, you might have a few frames in the beginning where you were kind of adjusting as you can see that it moved back and forth here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. Boop. Drag it to the beginning here. Uh, let's watch it. Looks great, looks beautiful, I love it. Uh, so let's say that you shot this in 4K and you want to have like a little bit of a, a pan of your landscape. Easy. Let me show you. Unfortunately, this is a 1080 time lapse, so this is not advised. This, you should only do this if this is 4K and you're going to be exporting in 1080 because if you scale and move, it's not true. 1080, if you're scaling and moving with the 1080 clip, like I'm doing here. So don't do what I'm doing, only if this is 4K. So let's say you wanna have it go from left to right, pan from left to right as the sun sets over the building. So what you're gonna do, you can start start off with scale. Uh, that gives you the, the room to kind of pan your footage. Uh, so bring, so right now we're at 100, bring it to like 120. Like I said, if this is 4K footage, you're fine. But this is 1080 and you're exporting in 1080? No, 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 no. I mean, there's other things you can do, like if it's like a 1080 exporting in 720, you can, you can get by, uh, but not advised. <laughs> so uh, let's do 125 and, and see what happens here. And then you're gonna click this little, you're gonna make sure your uh, scrubber here is at the beginning of the clip. And click this little toggle animation button to start your first keyframe. If you guys don't know what keyframes are, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on keyframes. Um, and then bring the scrubber somewhere near the end. It doesn't have to be the very end. I find that if I bring it all the way to the end, it's hard to touch the keyframe. Um, make it easier to see here. Move this over a little bit. Uh, so put the scrubber right about here and create a, another keyframe. So now you have two. Go back to the first one and then start and then drag. So this is the X and Y coordinates. Drag the X coordinate all the way to the edge until you see that black edge and just bring it 
it to the edge there. So this is also called the Ken Burns effect, if you guys know who Ken Burns is. So there, there's your first position, and if you just kind of scrub, you can finally, you can actually see that you're getting that pan. And then you'll also see it stops right there, and that's why you have to drag this to the end. So if I play it, a nice pan of your landscape of Austin. You can also uh, mess with the scale. Uh, like I said, if it's 4K. Go to the beginning, create a keyframe, go to the end, create a keyframe, go back to the beginning. Uh, let's say you want to zoom in on this building or something. I don't know. Um, so you have that beginning frame, beginning keyframe for both position and scale. Go to the last one. See, if you go to the last one, you'll see that's black, and that's why I always kind of create a little bit of room. Itty bitty living space. Right about there, that's fine. Just so you can see. So if you click this, arrow, you'll go to the next keyframe and you'll know exactly what you're editing because you have to make sure the scrubber is on the right keyframe. Um, and let's make the scale go up into that building. It's a courthouse, by the way, if you guys don't know what Boston is. Okay, so I did that. I'm going to bring this back. Let's see what happens. Look at that. It looks like you're zooming in on that building, but we're not. Magic. Okay, so there's video time lapse. Easy, but there's a few less things that you can do and you're not taking advantage of the whole sensor size. Okay, welcome. We're at the, the photo sequence part of the video. So with the photo sequence, I don't know the, the actual name of it. Uh, you guys will have to look it up, but there's a photo sequence uh, mode in uh, GoPros that will create a time lapse, but will take photos and create a big folder of photos. You will see here in this video that I will show you right now that you can pan up and down. Why, you ask? Well, huh. let me show you. So as you can see here, oh, let me show you how to import first. So go to File, go to Import. I have my photo sequence selected here. This is the whole folder. You'll see that GoPro will, your Yours might do the same, so it's a big just list of separate photos. Select the first one, make sure image sequence is selected here, and that's that will create the, uh, the time lapse for you, as you will find out here. Um, so there it is right there. If you double click it, watch it in source, you'll see that it creates a movie file. If you right click that, new sequence from clip, you got yourself a sequence, buddy. So you might notice something with this, uh, this time lapse here. It's four by three. Now, Tim, why would I want four by three? That's so 1990s. Well, let me tell you, viewer. Four by three has an advantage over 16 by nine. I know, I know. I said the same thing when I heard. So while it may not be 16 by nine, it's four by three, you will see that there are more pixels per, I don't know, dots per inch, pixels. There's more pixels. 4,000 by 3,000 is more than, what is 4K? Uh, 3840 by 2160. So basically, long story short, if you view a you know, GoPro sensor, it's in the shape of a square. If you want it to be uh, a 16 by nine video, it's a little bit cropped because you're not getting the top or the bottom and you're getting that kind of rectangle shape. With four by three, you're getting the full square, you're getting the full sensor. And because of that, if you bring that four by three stuff that is 4,000 by 3,000 in dimensions. If you bring that into a sequence that is 16 by nine, you got a little wiggle room. Okay, so you can do, uh, let's create a new sequence. Command N for new sequence, control for you PC freaks. And then just create, you know, a custom one, uh, 29.97 frames per second, that's fine. We'll do 1920 by 1080. Do that for, for now. If you wanna do 4K, sure, but you'll have less wiggle room. And yeah, that's good for now, okay. So here is the four by three stuff. If you bring it into here, it says it doesn't match the sequence settings. Keep the settings. So you'll see, oh, there's my forehead. Okay, let's just, uh, like we did before, skip the first few frames to get a nice clean start. Delete that, move to beginning, start. Um, great, looks good. Except for the fact that there's bars on the side, but you can, you can fix that. How? Let me show you. Scale. Boom. 
135, I believe, is the correct size. If I'm wrong, someone correct me in the comments below. I love it. I love when people correct me. It's awesome. As you see here, it's taking up the full 16 by 9 image, but there's some extra stuff here and here. And that's where you can do that panning effect that I showed you earlier. So I'll just quickly do that, set up the keyframes here. Good. I'll keep the scale the same. Let me delete these. So uh, I'll go to the beginning keyframe and then use the Y axis here, bring it all the way up until you see the black. Bring it to the top, boom, there. And then boom, go to the next keyframe and then go all the way to the bottom. And then that will animate by itself thanks to the power of technology. Bring that keyframe all the way end, all the way to the end. Bring that scrubber all, to the, all the way to the end. Press play and watch your masterpiece. Let me show you the final now. So that's it. That's all you gotta do. Super easy. Video, super easy. You might not even have to bring it into Premiere. Um, but if you wanna tweak it a little bit, especially if you're shooting in 4K, why not? Using the photo sequence uh, mode has an advantage. A little bit more s things that you have to do to make it look good. But in the end, ah. So if you like what you see, smash that motherfucking like button. You guys did a great job last time. I'm going for 5,000 this time. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Subscribe if you guys wanna hear more of this stuff. If you want to learn more about the camera aspects of, of time lapses and the right settings to do, let me know in the comments below and I'll create a video on that for you. Um, and that's it. I'll leave you guys with a nice slideshow of some other time lapses.